Hello, this is Yolanta from the YouTube channel English with an Erudite. Today we are going to talk about a favourite topic of mine, which is books. I have always been passionate about books. I started reading very early, I don't remember when. I don't remember the first book that I read, but I've read a lot of books in my life and I still try to read as much as I can. In my opinion, today we live in a paradise for readers because not only can we read books printed on paper, but we can read e-books or electronic books which we can download onto our phones or onto our tablets or onto the computers. We can also listen to audiobooks wherever we go. So nowadays I tend to listen to books more often than read books. A person who loves reading, so a person like me and probably a person like you because you're watching a program about books, is called an avid reader. So you and I are avid readers. We can also be called bookworms. Bookworms are people who are passionate about reading books. The book as, as we know it dates back from the 15th century and the form of a book as we know it today hasn't changed much since then. So a typical book like this one. And today I'm going to talk about books printed on paper. So of course you recognize immediately it is a book. A book with a cover, it's a cover of the book. Sometimes a book has an extra cover which is called a dust jacket or book jacket. It is the spine of the book. Uh, any book contains pages. Sometimes it is illustrated, sometimes it is not. Usually a book is divided into chapters. What we can see on a typical cover of a book is the name of the author. Usually it is the real name of the author. Sometimes it is a pseudonym. In some cases, the name of the author is not the name of the person who wrote the book because the, the book was written by a ghostwriter. So especially people such as celebrities who do not have the time or the ability to read, the, the ability to write, ask somebody or pay somebody to write their biography, for example. So, the author, the title, sometimes a subtitle, so the title is Europe at War. We say, the book is entitled Europe at War. And sometimes a subtitle, No Simple Victory. Very often nowadays, publishers put some critical acclaim on the cover. Critical acclaim means a very favourable comment from some reviewer. This one is from The Times and it's just one, one comment. But for example, on this book, we've got three such comments from different reviewers from The Guardian and The Sunday Express and The Daily Mail. And the publisher claims that the book is a bestseller. And of course, every writer on this planet hopes that his or her book is going to be a bestseller, so it's going to sell very well. Sometimes publishers put extra information about a book, such as the information about the awards that the book has been given. So for example, this book by Alice Smith is a very interesting book. It was the winner of the Whitbread Novel Award in 2005. And it was also shortlisted in 2005 and 2006 for two other uh, um, prizes. So it's extra information for us readers that it is a very, very good book. The book by Norman Davies is rather expensive because it is a hardback edition. You see, it's the cover 
It's pretty hard. This is hardback edition with a dust jacket. The book by Ali Smith. It's paperback edition, so it's made of lighter and cheaper paper. And thus it is less expensive to buy. This book is a pocket book. A pocket book means that it is very small and really light and you can put it in your pocket and go with it anywhere you want. But pocket books have very small print or font. So I don't buy many pocket books because for me they are difficult to read. In my opinion, books can be divided into two main categories, fiction and non-fiction. Non-fiction is a very, very broad category. What we can find in the non-fiction category are, for example, memoirs. This one is a memoir written by Dr. Alfred Cox. Very interesting memoir. And uh, because Dr. Cox and I know each other, so Dr. Cox was kind enough to put a dedication on the title page for me and he signed the book for me. So it's dedication, it's a dedication and the author's signature. Another memoir is this one. This memoir was written by Bernd Offen, but it was co-written, so the co-writer or co-author was Norman Jacobs. And because I had to proofread the book, and proofreading reading is a process during which you look for mistakes in a book, all kinds of mistakes, and I had to proofread it. So Mr. Jacobs wrote to Yolanta with thanks and kind regards. So I'm very proud about it, and I'm very happy that I have his dedication. Another type of nonfiction is an autobiography. This autobiography was written by a famous evolutionary biologist and public speaker, Richard Dawkins. He's a fascinating man, and I really recommend uh, his book to you, his books to you, especially this one. Apart from autobiographies, of course we can read biographies. This biography is it's a biography of Adolf Hitler. It was written by Ian Kershaw, who is a famous British historian. It's such a long biography that it came out in two tomes. But I really recommend it to people who are interested in the history of Europe, especially the 20th century history of Europe. As a teacher, I have read and collected a lot of books on teaching. Books like this one, A Course in Language Teaching. I've got lots of books about teaching. I'm also interested in psychology, so I've got quite a number of books uh, which are devoted to psychology and psychiatry. This one is Psychology for Dummies. Dummies are not particularly interest, intelligent people or people who are ignorant of a certain subject. And because I'm, I'm, I'm not a trained psychologist, so I thought, hmm, it's a book for me. And in fact, they say, a reference for the rest of us, for the rest of us who are not by profession psychiatrists or psychologists. A typical reference book in the past was an encyclopedia, but right now people tend to use internet sources. Another typical uh, uh, reference book was a dictionary. And I'll be honest with you, I nowadays I use a lot online dictionaries. But I, if I have doubts about some information that I find uh, in an online dictionary, I tend to cross-reference it with a paper dictionary. So I've got lots of paper dictionaries. This one is particularly interesting because it is a visual dictionary. And what we have here is lots and lots of chapters 
devoted to different subjects. For example, this one is tools and equipment. And I am not a very technologically minded person and sometimes I don't know the name of a particular tool um, uh, or equipment item, e even in my mother tongue. But I can consult this visual dictionary and I can find out what this particular thing, object, is called in English. Of course, all of you have uh, gone to school at some point, maybe you are still uh, part of the education system, so you know what a course book is, or a student's book is, or a textbook is. This one is for students who are getting ready for the Cambridge English Advanced Examination, but there are lots of, lots of uh, uh, different types of course books which focus on particular school subjects. For example, like this one, this one is on mathematics, actually it's a course book on mathematics for primary teachers. Another classic type of reference book is an atlas. This atlas, as you can see, is very old. It was published in Berlin in September 1942. It's a very interesting reference book, book for many reasons. Finally, fiction. I think that we all start our adventure with reading when we are very, very young and we cannot even read, but a parent or a brother or a sister reads a children's book to us. This one is a lovely, lovely children's book translated from Czech with charming, charming illustrations. It's a children's book. Sometimes a children's book for very young children does not contain any language. So in fact, it is a picture book. Then when we go a little bit old, older, we start reading stories or even novels. The people or the animals or the objects in a novel, in a story are called characters. In the past, we called them heroes, now they are called characters. What happens in a book is called a plot. If you want to say more about a book, we say the book is set in a small village in France in the 19th century. Or the book takes place in a small village in France in the 19th century. There are countless types of novels. I don't know how many novels I have read in my life. You know that um, lots of novels have become classics and as classics they are part of the canon. So in every country, I believe, in every language there is a canon. And being part of the canon, they are often set books. So set books are the books that school children, students are supposed to read. Unfortunately, some of my students have told me that the set books are boring and of no interest to them and rather are kind and so on and so forth. It's a pity because I think most of the classics are really wonderful, wonderful books. We could spend hours talking about novels, so I will just show you a few examples of novels that I have, for example, this one, just looking at, at its cover, you know, it's a thriller or it's a murder mystery, you know, just looking at the cover and the title, Lies, 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 but Adele Parks. This one, The Widow, very similar cover, dark cover, it's a murder mystery or a who done it. So we want to know who really committed the crime. The book by Ben Elton is a historical book. So it is not a history book, but it is a historical book. So it combines historic facts with fictional characters. Actually, it is a murder mystery murder mystery set during the First World War. The book 
by Marina Levitska is, is very funny to read. So it's an entertaining book. Really funny. Marina Levitska is very good. I love her sense of humor and her wit. She's extremely witty. And the one by Douglas Kennedy is a romantic novel. I'm not a great fan of romantic novels, but this one is really good. If we think that a book is really interesting, and of course it's a subjective opinion, because what's interesting for you might not be interesting for me at all, we can say that this book is fascinating, or it's really well written, or it is fast moving, or it is thought provoking. So it makes you think. If you can't stop reading a book, so the book grips you and you just don't want to eat, you don't want to watch Netflix, you don't want to go to the toilet or meet friends, you just go on reading. We can say this book is gripping. It's a gripping book. Sometimes such a book is also called unputdownable because you just have to go on reading. You cannot put it down. So it is unputdownable. But sometimes the book is just boring or have heavy going, so nothing really happens in the book, or the characters or events are implausible. So you think, no, it's not realistic, it can't be true, I don't like it. Of course, if it is a fantasy book or science fiction book, you think, okay, that's fine, that's fine. But if it is supposed to be a realistic book and you don't think it is really realistic, you say, no, it is implausible or it is really unlikely. I hope that in the future I can recommend to you a lot of books which I have read over the years and which I think are excellent or fascinating or moving or just worth reading. So until then, bye bye!